Welcome back live from Davos, Switzerland, SISAT 2021. This is the last day, day three, and the last stretch actually because uh, we can go up the, the afternoon. We had a busy morning talking about uh, hacking, uh, panel discussion on cuts and new space, how to combine new space with security. Lots of discussions. Uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed it, you found it interesting, and you learned a couple of things as I did. Um, Let's welcome our new uh, speaker. Uh, his name is Julien Bonneau. He's also from Switzerland, uh, from an organization called uh, Space Innovation that you might know as uh, its former name, uh, the Swiss Space Center. Uh, Space Innovation is based at the EPFL, the Swiss Federal Institute of uh, Technology in Lausanne. Uh, they are actually partner of the uh, Vice Presidency for uh, Innovation. Um, combining the Lausanne and ETH uh, Zurich locations. Julien is with us because uh, he's a space engineer. His background is uh, microwave and electronics. He's been uh, interested uh, in cybersecurity uh, recently and space innovation. He's convinced that <coughs> sorry, cyber is a big, a big topic for the future of space. Um, Julien, welcome to SISAT 2021. Hello, Mathieu. Thank you very much for, for the introduction. Glad to be here. Um, actually, I'm really glad to be to be the last uh, the last talk uh, of the day and of uh, SISAT 2021. Um, as you said, I'm a space engineer in general with a background in, in electronics, but uh, with the oncoming um, space revolution evolution. Uh, actually, uh, yes, for us and for me, uh, cybersecurity is definitely uh, a huge, huge topic. So with my presentation, I will give you an overview of security challenges and solutions for constellations. Here is a bit, uh, is a bit the agenda of, uh, of, of my presentation. I will give you a short introduction about space innovation, why, why we are here. Uh, a bit the context of the space sector in general, then the security challenges, the new trends and solutions in the field of cybersecurity, then a bit of cybersecurity at various levels of space technology innovation, and then uh, an outlook uh, in order to, to start a bit uh, the, the Q&A uh, session. So space innovation, uh, we are a non-profit uh, organization uh, based in both EPFL and uh, ETH uh, in, uh, in Zurich. Uh, we are here uh, to strengthen Switzerland's space capability uh, and to involve prayer in space innovation. Basically, we are here to support your organization, academia, RTO, or industry uh, in the different space projects. Uh, we are also here to increase collaboration within Switzerland uh, between the different stakeholders uh, and to strengthen the space, uh, the space network. Um, Basically, we have a pool uh, of, uh, of uh, members, uh, 44 uh, members, and uh, within those members, we have also academia with a fair amount of uh, laboratories. Uh, SciSec is also a part of our network, and we are really here uh, to, 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 um, to concentrate uh, the different competencies at national level and trying to push them uh, abroad too. So now I'm, I'm going to move on uh, with the context uh, of, of my presentation and why I'm here, basically. So uh, as you know, um, we, we had uh, several uh, industrial revolutions, and we can compare that to, uh, to space also revolutions. So this is a, the different period, space 2.0, space 3.0, and now space 4.0. Basically, the space 2.0 was from the race to the moon till the end of the 90s, uh, with the first boom of television and the beginning of mobile telephony. We have seen uh, numerous um, at telecommunication uh, companies such as Telsat, SES, Intelsat, and so on and so on, building few satellites to ten, uh, tens of satellites per year. Um, then at the end uh, of the century, uh, we had the, 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 the operation of the ISS. And uh, with that, we enter in space 3.0. And uh, at the beginning of the 2000s, um, we have seen the golden age uh, for space industry. Uh, we were building basically tens of satellites uh, per year and mainly NGO. Uh, 
And after that, we got the second boom uh, with internet and mobile telephony. Uh, do, if you do remember, uh, Apple uh, start uh, in 2007 with uh, with the iPhone. Um, and with that also, we have seen the first uh, constellation emerging, uh, especially Global Star, Iridium, and then at the end of the decade, uh, O3B. Uh, here, about telecommunication, uh, the satellites were mainly Geo, but also uh, uh, Leo and uh, Mio for, uh, for the constellations. And after that, uh, after the mid uh, of the 2010s, um, we had the third boom, uh, and it's the explosion of internet and the data in general. Uh, and with that arrived the new space and space 4.0. And with that, we got the creation of mega constellation, such as the two well-known OneWeb and Starlink. Here, we are talking about hundreds to thousands of satellites and mainly in, uh, in LEO. So as you, as you may know, uh, before this uh, last last revolution, space was a fine niche uh, and the related space activity were addressed to specialist company. Okay, quality and reliability were the, um, let's say, the two main words uh, of, the, of the different missions. Now, space is evolving from being the preserve of governments for a few fair faring nations to a situation in which there is um, an increased number of diverse space actors around the world, including um, the emergence of private companies, the participation of academias, um, industries also, and citizens, the digitalization uh, at global scale and global interaction. Basically, this is the definition of uh, Space 4.0. This is a new era, and uh, we are moving toward it. Um, why we are moving uh, toward it? As I said, with the third boom, we have a huge increase of end users. Uh, and with that, there is a huge increase of satellites production. And with that, of course, there is an increase uh, of threats. Just, just this picture is a bit to, to, to image, to highlight uh, what I said and, and to present you uh, more with the hands uh, what I'm talking about, so about the, the security challenges. Basically, you can see on this picture, uh, there is people linked together. Okay, If you decrease the number of people, there is less interaction, less links, and of course, less values, less less treasures um, and of course less threats but now if you compare all the people to satellites constellations uh, and you increase the number uh, of uh, of people of course you will have more values more treasures and of course you will increase also the number of threats so still uh, talking about security challenges Today, most of the people take the space in general for granted every day in our lives. With satellites, um, we are supporting global communication, as, as you know, but also economics, government, and military functions. And it is clear that today, space is a dedicated target for cyber criminality. And by cyber criminality, I mean especially cyber attacks, uh, including jam, spoofing, hacking uh, attacks. Okay. So, uh, in my in my view, cybersecurity uh, consists of technology, processes, and control designed to protect systems, networks, and data. System meaning uh, satellite constellations, but also um, the the ground infrastructure and the ground system, and this is part of the overall system. But also the network, meaning the interaction between the different subsystems uh, and the ground, of course, and the data, which is the flux uh, between uh, between the different subsystems. Uh, most of all, for me, uh, effective cybersecurity reduces the risks, but also protects against the unauthorized exploitation or access denial of system networks and technologies. By that, Another image, um, if you compare your system uh, to, a, to, a, to a castle during the Middle Age, basically an effective cybersecurity reduce the risks would be like you create a wall or ramparts around your castle in order to, to reduce the risk of an attack. Because when the invader will arrive at your castle and see those big ramparts, they will say, okay, I will not try to, to go in. 
okay? And, and uh, the protection against an authorized exploitation or access denial of the system is basically the defense of your system. Uh, and again, in the image of my castle, it will be the army and the weapons, okay? So why an increase of threats? Um, once again, uh, regarding the security challenges, as I said, there is more user dependent of space and will be more and more user um, dependent of space. There is a huge increase of satellites number. So by increasing the number of satellites, of course, you have more wink links. So basically you have more entry point to hack. So it, in general, uh, it will be easier to hack. There is also at personal level uh, more actors, so also more risks because there is uh, once again more entry point. I think it's um, Federico this morning who said that uh, in his company, in Astrocast, they are pushing a lot uh, to, to train uh, people and collaborators. And this is, this, is, uh, this is an important thing and I really do agree with him. Um, there is also more data processing, flows and storage on board the spacecraft, but also on ground with on ground infrastructures. And this is has to be taken into account. I mean, usually when we are talking about space, we are talking about spacecraft, but without on ground facilities, we cannot do anything with the space, um, uh, space uh, craft. Another point is hyperconnectivity and cloud management. We have a huge discussion uh, Wednesday afternoon. Uh, and overall, the digitalization also. Um, uh, this is a big, big, big thing. And, uh, and of course, um, uh, it, it, is, it is a huge risk uh, there. Another topic, uh, it's the use of non-custom or space products. And by that, uh, when I'm saying non-custom or space product, I'm saying that the use of COTS, uh, components of the shelf. Um, those components are not dedicated to space, okay? Uh, till now, usually we were using, uh, I mean, mainly we were using custom or space product, or space grade products, uh, um, and now we are using COTS. Uh, we don't know about their processes, we don't know about uh, what we are putting in them, um, so it could be also a potential uh, threat there, and there is definitely a risk. Another point is uh, the software-driven uh, systems, um, and there is more and more um, uh, uh, technology um, software-driven. So, of course, uh, there is a huge threat there. And a last point, which is very important also, is the protection of manufacturing data. When you are on and uh, manufacturing, producing uh, your products, spacecraft, whatever you are doing, uh, related to the space, uh, the protection of the manufacturing data is a big, big, big thing. So what about the new trend and solution in the field? Um, basically, I would address as fellows the future technological developments. Um, security of the data and the links. So when I'm saying that, it's space to ground, ground to space, space to space at value level, physical, logical, data, network, and so on and so on. And so on. Uh, I would also consider security of the equipment, spacecraft, ground station, once again, very important, um, and also at user level. This is, this is uh, very, uh, very uh, important, especially against intentional interference, spoofing, jamming, uh, etc., etc. The third one would be protection of the classified information. Um, this is very important on board, on ground, in process, at user, but also at infrastructure level. Uh, I mean, this is this is a, a huge topic too. The fourth one will be the management of the key through their complete life cycle. Okay, uh, and then the the two last one um, uh, would be the technology supporting testing, monitoring, mitigation, situational awareness, and forensic and analysis and cyber attack. Here it's more dedicated to fields uh, such as uh, um, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the la last one is technological enabler and transversal building blocks. Um, basically, there uh, it's um, to integrate and to spin in uh, technology or products from other um, uh, sector into the space sector. 
and about solution, uh, what we can find today as domain, as solution uh, for, for future technological development in the space field, it's of course uh, artificial intelligence, so such as machine learning, deep learning, but also neural network, cognitive computing or autonomic computing. Also, we talked about um, quantum technology uh, Wednesday morning. Uh, of course, this is a, a huge, huge uh, field, uh, especially uh, for number generation in cryptography, uh, but also for secure communication in quantum, uh, with the quantum key distribution. Uh, two other points, it's also blockchain, uh, well, well known uh, in the field of, of banks, for instance, uh, and we can use it, of course, uh, in, the, in the space sector. And the last one is uh, the Internet of Things, with, as I said, uh, more and more digitalization, more and more uh, connectivity. Um, here I'm presenting more... Um, Cyber security at various levels of space technology innovation. This is, um, let's say, the view uh, of of um, of ESA, uh, and I'm I'm sharing I'm sharing this view. Basically, it's it's uh, it's five points: the identification and implementation of reference uh, architecture for space and ground data uh, based data processing system. Um, also, the implementation uh, of end-to-end -end and individual security uh, mechanism uh, uh, through standardization. We have a, a discussion this morning about uh, standardization, uh, and I think standardization uh, with uh, ECSS or through ECSS, but also other kind of standard in the field of cybersecurity, maybe we can find the, the right way for, for space application. Um, development of cost-effective technology and solution. Um, as I said, today with a new space, we have see, we can see less and less custom or space-grade uh, technologies, uh, and we are more doing developments toward cost-effective, um, which is okay. Uh, I mean, it's more dedicated to, to projects and to know your projects. Before, it was more like multi-project uh, qualification or multi project um, uh, technologies. Uh, the fourth one would be the support and uh, the, the implementation of future post uh, algorithm, technology and architecture. And the last one, as I said, and this is very, uh, very important, it's existing commercial security tools shall be customized or extended for the specific uh, of the space data uh, processing um, environment. And by that, I mean really the spinning uh, of technology uh, or products from other sector into the space domain. And I think uh, this is something very important, and especially if we doing the addition of this point with the development of cost-effective technologies and solutions. So now um, about uh, the outlook uh, of, of uh, my, uh, my presentation. So now what? Um, what I would say is to increase uh, the number of collaboration at delegation level, national and international, uh, with other cyber security organization, uh, such as the Consultative Committee for Space Data System or the European Cyber Security Organization, etc., etc., etc. I think it's very important to to be inspired by them. They know what they are doing and so on, and we should um, create Strength or strengthen the links uh, between those agencies with our uh, ecosystem. Maybe at Swiss level, um, and why not at European level after, create working groups on relevant cybersecurity for space. Uh, maybe it would be more a bottom up approach uh, from the expert to, to the delegation, but this is something uh, I, I think it's, it's very important. Also sharing, sharing cyber issues and or cases among those working groups. Uh, this would be potentially anonymous, but this is concrete uh, cyber issues or cases uh, where we can discuss and work on in order to, to protect the future technologies or products. Also identifying uh, the weakest uh, link of space system, but also in manufacturing of space system, okay, in order to correct and develop them. Um, this is 
I think the, the base uh, to, in, in a risk assessment to, to identify the, the weak and, uh, weakest thing. Um, and of course, and I really do things uh, as a good sensor, you know, uh, as an engineer, you are trying to, 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 to take the, the bigger picture always. Uh, and I think uh, that includes cybersecurity now in quality management processes. It's 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 very important. So so this is why also standardization, maybe such as ECSS, there is plenty of things in ES, in ES, ECSS, but we can take what we want and we can let's say let on the side what we don't want and maybe we can imagine something like that uh, working on the kind of cybersecurity for space uh, standards. And the last point, but not the least, and I think it's very, very important, is the spinning of uh, of technology from other sector into the into the space sector. And this could be linked also to the first one with uh, the collaboration with the cybersecurity organization. I think it's uh, it's very important to increase that uh, in in the field of uh, cyber security. And with that, uh, I think it's my last slide. Thank you very much for, for the opportunity uh, to, to discuss with you and to, to share a bit uh, our thought um, about uh, cybersecurity for space. And uh, here is just, uh, if you want uh, to, to have uh, or to exchange with me, you, you can contact me through, uh, through the headquarters of the Zurich Hub uh, at uh, ETH. Thank you very much. Uh, back to you, uh, Mathieu. Thank you, uh, Julien. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm glad that uh, you presented on the last day because you did an excellent job at summarizing a bit the, uh, the landscape and uh, the challenges and the potential way forward. Um, so thanks for that. Let me uh, ask you a couple of questions. Um, first of all, uh, space innovation, as you mentioned before, is now part of uh, EPFL and ETH uh, Zurich. Uh, two of the schools that are uh, among the, the best uh, engineering schools in Europe, um, they, they have space activities. Uh, how much are they concerned about security or how much are they willing to include security in their space programs? and to, to, to be ready to, to engage, to be involved in maybe R&D or uh, any activities to, to, to help uh, fix the problem, as we said uh, many times during the event. Yes, so for the moment, this is our job, basically, um, at Space Innovation, is really to raise awareness about the needs uh, of the space community. By that, I mean academia, a lower TRL, uh, RTO at mid-TRL and then uh, industries actor. Um, I really think that now we are identifying uh, cybersecurity as a hot topic and very important topic and especially for new space and we are all moving toward that. Uh, I really think that uh, the dedicated groups, labs, uh, has to be involved, of course, in, in this research. And, and currently, uh, we are trying to push them, uh, to, to show them that uh, space is also part uh, of the big family uh, into, into uh, cybersecurity uh, issues. And uh, they, they have to, to focus also on that. So for that, of course, we are trying to, to, to find the right partners to work on uh, on, on this topic for for space and uh, and uh, increase the number of collaboration between the the different uh, the different actor in order to to harmonize a bit and to avoid the redundancy uh, about the different uh, topics. Uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I'll take a question from the chat uh, from Olivier. Um, he's asking uh, you, Julien if uh, space innovation already identified or initiated some uh, technology development activities to address specific points of spacecraft with respect to uh, cybersecurity? Not yet. Uh, we, are we have uh, identified uh, other topic, um, but, uh, but we are working on it. Uh, as I said uh, early in my presentation, I'm not an expert in cybersecurity. Uh, it's just uh, thoughts and uh, what I think, uh, but uh, but I think we need to increase um, uh, the, the number of people involved. Um, and, and for that, uh, I have a colleague at Space Innovation working on software and operation in general, and I ask him 
to, to, to create, a, 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 let's say, a, a dedicated uh, session uh, to, 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 to discuss uh, cybersecurity um, uh, threats and risk uh, to, to be addressed. Um, in order to initiate discussion and to see at Swiss level in the first time uh, on what we need really uh, to work uh, tomorrow, not uh, not in five or ten days, but tomorrow, what is very, uh, I mean, the biggest priority, basically. Thank you, uh, Julien. Um, maybe, I don't know how much uh, you can comment on that, uh, you uh, mentioned a lot of different technologies that uh, could be relevant uh, for cyber, cyber security in space, uh, blockchain and many others. Uh, are there any specific R&D topics that uh, you guys would like to push uh, forward? Um, so, this is a tricky <laughs> question because, <laughs> as I said, I try to initiate um, the focus on cybersecurity. So for the moment, it's more me pushing. Um, so yes, uh, quantum technology, it's a big part. Um, there is many people working on that. Uh, at Swiss level, uh, we have very strong competencies in machine learning, deep learning. This is something, uh, I mean, we should focus on, but also blockchain. I, I spoke about blockchain. Um, we have a university in Basel uh, with uh, some professor, uh, professors working on blockchain. Uh, we have also Zug, uh, a city uh, in Switzerland, um, uh, who has uh, a lot of application of blockchain. Uh, I think I think it's uh, it's important. Um, also. Um, uh, Reconfability um, of a spacecraft. Uh, spacecraft. Uh, so in orbit, uh, we have a, we have a company, Sysec, uh, basically working on that, and I think it's it's important also to to, to push uh, to push forward in this direction. So, uh, in my point of view, this is the the, the three uh, the three uh, main topics. Uh, but of course, uh, this is to be discussed with uh, the right uh, experts. Uh, and and uh, the uh, high executive also uh, in order to see what are their needs and uh, what they lack uh, of uh, of uh, of technology. Yeah, thanks a lot for also mentioning this project we have uh, on in orbit uh, reconfiguration. Also, thanks a lot for uh, actually pronouncing SISEC because Federico uh, this morning pronounced uh, SISEX uh, by mistake, <laughs> which uh, I thought was very funny. Anyway, um, one, one more question on my side. Um, we talked about innovation, technology, quantum blockchain, and so on and so on. What about education? Uh, you guys are sitting at the uh, EPFL, ETH. Uh, we, we discussed several times that it is important to include in the uh, training and ed education of space engineers uh, to, to at least have a basic level of knowledge uh, about security. Um, what can we do about this? Yes, this is a, an excellent uh, point. Um, so actually, in our um, core business, I would say, um, we are giving some courses uh, at EPFL for the moment. We are trying also to, to push on, on ETH say, side. Um, and uh, basically, um, we, we are trying to, uh, to implement cybersecurity in the topic of uh, um, uh, um, system engineering courses. Uh, to take once again the bigger picture, not going into detail, but to say that this is important, uh, why it is important, okay? And you have to take into account the cybersecurity topic, not at the end, not at the middle, but during all the phases uh, of your project, from day one till the end, uh, uh, meaning the operation uh, of, of your spacecraft. Um, so. This is what we are doing at the moment in terms of, uh, of, uh, of education. Thank you. And I can't resist to ask you this last question. Uh, again, I was uh, talking to Federico. He was presenting this morning. I don't know if you followed. Uh, he was one of the team members that uh, developed uh, SwissCube. Uh, I just checked on Wikipedia. It was launched uh, in 2009. Uh, and as you know, we are... Uh, 
thinking and uh, we will be including for next year's uh, SciSat event in 2022, uh, trying to get uh, some uh, flat sats or spare satellites to, to, to get some uh, hackers uh, work on it, find vulnerabilities, see if we, if we can do sort of a hacking challenge uh, along with the conference. Do you have any Swiss Cube uh, left at the former uh, Swiss Space Center uh, facilities that uh, we could borrow for a weekend? <laughs> Uh, this is a good question. I should ask uh, my, my director, uh, Volker Gass, Professor Volker Gass. Uh, I think he might have. Um, I will ask and I will let you know, Mathieu. Thank you, uh, Julien. You, you don't have to, uh, to answer now. Um, Julien, one uh, quiz question. Uh, I always forgot during the event to ask a question to the speaker and panelist, but uh, you'll be the first. Uh, do you, by any chance, recognize that satellite? Do you know which one it is? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I cannot no. see it anymore since I'm speaking. And uh, uh, I yeah, you have a very <laughs> tiny uh, window. Uh, take a look. Maybe also people in the chat. Uh, the first that uh, finds uh, which satellite this is, maybe uh, should win. Uh, I'm looking at the team. <laughs> like a free ticket for a SciSat 2022. Uh, it's, it's not hard, so uh, if you're quick and maybe the first uh, that finds the answer will get a goodie or a free ticket for uh, the, uh, the event next year. Or maybe, Julien, you, you got the, the answer? I don't have the answer. I can give you some uh, satellites I work on, such as, uh, such as um, uh, AlphaSat, which is a very strange satellite, but this one, no, I cannot, I cannot tell. Uh, it's not AlphaSat. <laughs> no, I know, I know, I know it's not AlphaSat. AlphaSat has a huge reflector. Uh, this is not uh, AlphaSat for sure. Yeah, it's nothing to do also with new space. So I'll just uh, put the book uh, of uh, Ignacio de Chile uh, down. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe you said that uh, Olivier was in the chat. I guess uh, you are talking Olivier from ISA. Maybe he might know. Yeah, Olivier, uh, indeed, it's Olivier Perra from ISA. Olivier, if you mm -hmm. recognize that satellite, uh, you, you get a free ticket or a goodie for, uh, for next year. Thank you so much, uh, Julien, for uh, being with us. Thank you uh, for Space Innovation, because you guys are actually one of the sponsors of the event. Uh, thank you for supporting SciSat uh, 2021. Thanks a lot, Julien. Thank you, Mathieu. Thank you to all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.